Hey, welcome back to Cody Crafted. Uh, today is a little tech tip. We're gonna call these cheat codes because oh, code man. Yeah. All right, so on uh, today's cheat code, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to replace and assemble upper control arms for aftermarket suspension. We discovered in shooting another video for another project that I kind of told you all about how to install these upper control arms for Dobinson suspension. Um, but we did a really crappy job of filming the actual installation. Um, so we had a bunch of footage that really didn't jive and it really didn't work with the rest of the video. Uh, so we're gonna make this one a separate video and do a few little how-tos. We're not really a how-to channel, but this is a good one. It doesn't look like this information is really out there on YouTube. Hope you enjoy, check it out, and uh, let me know if you like it. I'd be happy to do some more. If you have any particular topics, say the word. We'll see what we can do. What do you think? Click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you would like more content, follow social media at Cody Crafted on Instagram. All right, so on today's cheat code, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace this upper control arm. Um, not a big deal. There's a bunch of information about how to do this on the web, but a few key points. I generally do not disconnect the tie rod um, GX 460s, GX 470s that have KDSS do take a little bit of extra effort. All right, so upper control arm, spindle, upper ball joint, tie rod, coil over strut, excuse me, coil over shock. And even though it's not an adjustable coil over, it is still a coil over a shock because it is not a McPherson strut. It is not part of the turning apparatus of the suspension so uh, the control arms is a double wishbone with a coil over shock by definition so all right we're gonna yank this out uh, that part's pretty straightforward um, and uh, and then I'll show you guys a couple of tricks on how to get this upper control arm bolt because this dude is like almost two feet long okay so uh, we've got most everything disconnected in here and uh, the upper strut mount is still uh, connected for shock Still a strut mount, really, technically what it's called. Anyway, but, uh, all right, so everything is relatively disconnected in here. There's still a couple little things. Um, I always loosen the brake line from the chassis right here, this ABS wire from the upper control arm uh, down inside the ABS wire here. Um, we can actually pull one more off right here, but it's not a big deal. And then the brake line that goes in the strut. So this hard line can flex a little bit. It's not a problem. Um, I actually like to leave the tie rod connected uh, because I have had axles pop out of the inner joint before. It'll it'll fall too far away. Um, this gives you plenty of room to work, but it keeps it from just the, the it keeps the upright and the brakes from just falling away. So. Um, one less thing to fight, basically. So, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the upper control arm. It is held in by one, like I said, about 18 inch long bolt. Um, Tacomas, and uh, specifically Tacomas, you're gonna have a little bit of interference on the inner fender right here. Um, there is barely any interference on the GX, um, just to, just a tick so I just take some channel locks these are a little big actually and kind of slip them in here and just kind of just kind of give that a little adjustment just to give yourself about another quarter inch uh, this car's a 2010 and I've already told him these are all dried out we already did the other side so we have new little covers on order don't worry about that don't scathe me in the comments for it 
customers already ordered them. So we'll just get all these chips out of the way because that's like Doritos. Okay. So basically how I get these out. Um, on the GX, there can be an AC line in the way up inside the fender apron. Uh, sometimes it fights me, sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of depends. So start off by pressing the bolt from the rear towards the front. You'll see the washer goes with it. And then what I normally do is take the washer and kind of push it at an angle and use it to bite the bolt and just work the bolt about an inch or a bite at a time. All right, so we got a little interference right there, but if you wiggle it, it'll usually come right out. Easy enough. The upper control arms normally come with a new washer. So I will take the old ones and throw them in the bin, uh, in the spares. Um, this control arm is actually in good shape. The only problem with it is it doesn't have enough caster and it doesn't have enough ball joint angle for when we do the lift kit or the lift. Um, this one actually has a tear in it. These aren't serviceable. They have to be replaced, but I think Toyota really only sells the whole upper control arm. Either way, doesn't matter. We don't care. It was in the trash. All right. So at this point, like I said, this was kind of an impromptu video. So we're going to cut to ball joint assembly for Dobinson's upper control arms. Show you guys how to put those together. Uh, that car's already gone. This video is filmed, what's it been, Rowan? Two months? Like a month or two. Yeah. yeah, it's been like six or eight weeks since we filmed that footage. So at this point, this vehicle is actually getting SPC upper control arms. The assembly process on those is way simpler. Um, and those control arms are already uh, put together. So we're gonna cut here. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the shock with our Fox suspension that we're putting on this particular vehicle. And then we will be back and I will show you uh, about reinstalling the new upper control arm. So. All right, so when you get your upper control arms, you can pay to have them assembled, but we have the capability to do that here because we got stuff and we got things. And these are some pretty girls. I really like these. They have this rubber but still swiveling bushing in them and they do a really good job. So this is driver's side, goes thusly. Dobbinson's. Yes. So. Uh, when you get your control arms, your ball joints come separate. These are 3.5 Automotive, made in Japan. They are very high quality. I have yet to have to replace one. Um, they are a very tight fit, so if you don't know what you're doing pressing ball joints, you might either have a professional, such as myself, or uh, have Dobinson's press them in. They are an extremely close tolerance. So, this guy goes in thusly, and it is a full interference fit. So, we got to push that like another quarter inch past where we're at. Um, so, it's got to go all the way up to there. So, anyways. Uh, the best thing I have found to do on these, because they're so tight, is uh, actually, not, don't take any metal, but take the powder coat off of the inside of here, because uh, the thickness of the powder coat uh, actually can cause these to not want to go in straight. I've had to fight them before. So let me grab a rag uh, and a little sanding disc, and uh, we'll do that. Just happen to have one right here. This is just a little 60 or 80 grit um, flap wheel. I get these at Northern or Harbor Freight or whatever. I don't use them enough to have to. Oh, I gotta get a smaller one. Never mind. 
Same deal, just a little smaller. So, I don't know if you guys can see that in there. We touch metal right here a little bit, but for the most part, we're, you know, we're not getting into the metal. You just want to get it down so you've got a nice nice slick surface in there without uh without adding you know taking away that additional thickness all right that ought to do it so then what you need i use a ball joint adapter kit Normally use with a ball joint press. A little big. There we go. That's a nice. Oh, there it is. It was already out. Duh. And then I believe yep. that cup fits it just right. And you have to space it up. this setup doesn't uh, doesn't allow for um, yeah you have to have a, a cup on the top or a piece of tube um, see if this will throw that far I like to get it, use that for speed and this for accuracy. I think we've talked about this before in another video. And just put a little pressure on it just to make sure it's lined up. I think we're pretty good. Just drive it home. As you can see, nice and straight. We're gonna put the snap ring on next. Okay, yeah, we're gonna need those in a second. Okay. So now we gotta install our snap ring. I like to use these, uh, these are like for doing transmissions. They have the serrations on the outside to kind of hold it. So we go down over the top, get flush. Fight it a little bit, cause you know, wouldn't be the same if we didn't. There we go. And there we go. Safety snap ring. These are all pre-lubed. Just want to make sure all your lube stays in as much as you can. These come down. And then the rubber boot. Rolls on. Like that. And this is a spiral ring. These are kind of a bear. So the trick, and I fought these for probably a half an hour the first time I did them. So don't feel bad if you're doing these at home and you, and you, uh, and you fight them. Take the first one, or the first end, start it down low, try to get it in the groove, and then you literally have to just hold it and grab a pair of needle nose without puncturing the boot. Grab it and kind of pull it down and on, and then hold it in place. Grab another corner, and pull it over. Grab a corner, or grab an opposite quadrant. And kind of give it some slack. 
from the opposite side. There it goes, right there. Just like that. Now that dude ain't coming off. Okay, so we're back with our coilover shock freshly installed and I uh, still have the upper control arm out of the way. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, you saw me assembling Dobinson's control arms. These are from SPC, they're forged. Uh, they have a ton of adjustment in them. Uh, they got these really cool sphericals that still have rubber. I'm, I like these, uh, I haven't had any problem with them. You know, if we're jumping, maybe the ball joint moving could be something to be concerned about, but um, for just ride quality and, and optimal adjustment, it's, you know, they're great. So. All right, they do include new washers. So we will put one on each side. Our bolt is still chilling right here. So we start with a washer. We get our upper control arm. Thing to keep in mind, this ABS wire goes over the top. It is pulled a little taunt right here, um, but it's okay. There we go. All right, so the ABS wire goes over the top. It does not go under the control arm. Ask me how I know. So this guy goes right in here. And much like when we took it out, my favorite method is to use the washer and kind of pull it in with little bites on the washer. It lines right up, slide the washer back, push the washer forward. The angle of the washer bites the bolt. If you can't quite get it with the washer, you can grab a pair of channel locks and do it. But honestly, this works just fast enough. Goes all the way through the shock mount or the shock tower. And right there's a little tight. As you can see, this is in real time, so it literally took about a minute to put that together. Next step, upper ball joint, and this is just so the thing doesn't fall apart on you, it goes flopping around. washer for the back side. Start lining up our wires and such. Yeah, that cover's dead too. This car's a 2010. It only has 70,000 miles on it, but I would venture to say it's been a fair life, a fair bit of its life idling. These rubber covers got real warm. So we start the nuts. Run it down by hand. Now the cool thing about aftermarket control arms is you can tighten them up with the suspension at full droop. Um, it doesn't matter on these because you have bushings that rotate freely. So your lower shock mount on your Fox coilover, your upper control arm bushings. Now the lower control arm bushings, I always lower the vehicle to right height before I tighten those. And then they get double checked again when they get aligned. So spec on this is about there. Actually it's yeah about there. I think there is a spec like 85 or something, but uh, to be honest with you, you're gonna have a really hard time getting a torque wrench in there. And with two wrenches, unless you're an absolute gorilla, there's no way you can over tighten that bolt. So don't don't fret over it, just make sure it's nice and snug. All right, don't forget this little guy. Hold your ABS wire in place. We've got a 12 millimeter, holds this brake line on. Get it started back. 12 millimeter head, it's an M8 bolt. All right. 
There we go. Old school drop light works great. All right, so this ABS wire clip, lay back, and retainer bolt. And there is a, there's two 12 millimeter head M8s. Uh, this one is the shorter of the two. It goes in the knuckle. Upright. And a little snuggy snug. Get them tight. Get them tight. Make sure you get this guy. Nice and snug. And ABS wire. Now, if you've got a lot of travel, this one is now at full droop. And we have just a little bit of tension on the wire right here. So what I'll do, so I'll just take a pair of pliers, give this a little tweak. About like that, just to take the tension out of that. Everything else is good, and there's no tension. We don't want to pull these ABS wires because they are rather expensive. Uh, and they're kind of eh, not horrible to change, but it's just a waste of money if you screw them up. So during our strut installation, we disconnected the KDSS link, sway bar link here. Um, what I'll do is I will lower the car back to ride height and that will push the sway bar up on this side and then we'll put that back together and then hang the skid plate back up underneath. Uh, while the skid plate's down, I'll also tighten the uh, lower control arms even though they're not set for the alignment. One of the last things, let me go grab the torque wrench. And torque the upper ball joint. to spec. New nut for the upper ball joint is a 22. These don't get a ton of torque. I think spec on them is like 35 or 40, something like that. It's not much. Basically, you just snug it up so you're good and tight and your castellation lines up. All right, so one of the things that's very important with castellated nuts and uh, pins is to make sure that you go through and have full engagement so that the nut not only can't back off, but it also can't tighten itself. I have actually made mistakes in the past where that hole was here and I thought, Oh no, it'll be fine, you know, because it's not going to back itself off on a wheel bearing. Uh, and no, it was on the right side of the car and it over tightened itself going down the road. So that was bad. We put a couple of pumps of grease in the ball joint, lower it down on its suspension, tighten all the loose control arms because we did do the rear and the uh, rear control arms are all loose right now. Put that sway bar link back on. And uh, this dude goes to alignment. Uh, we'll do a measurement check, a height check, once we get it on the ground, make sure it's still sitting level. Yeah, this car was within an eighth of an inch, which is pretty crazy for a GX460, because a lot of these are half inch, five eighths, three quarters of an inch low on one side. Um, but uh, we should be pretty close. I think the KDSS is broke in on this one. So um, let's drop it like it's hot. Okie okay, dokie, okay. so we have got our specimen on our wheel cribs uh, so that um, my speltness can fit underneath to tighten the things. So, yeah. Uh, 22, 19, 17. And uh, that's most of the sizes you need. Okie okay, dokie! Okay. Tighten up some suspension arms. What do you say, Jones?
on these Toyotas, the lower control arms. The one you tighten and loosen on the lower control arm is the front one. Uh, is the bolt on the front one? Sorry, the one you tighten, the one you adjust. The pinch bolt is the front on the front control arm. It's the bolt that goes all the way through. If you try to adjust the back, you're trying to adjust the camber with it tight. It's not going to work. So, uh, on the rear of the lower control arm, it is the nut on the back, and the bolt is the adjuster. So your adjustments are on the inside, and your tension is on the outside. Pay attention. You gotta use your dad's strength on these. They gotta be pretty snug, or they'll make noise. You always want to do this with the vehicle at ride height, which is why these wheel cribs are so stinking handy. All right, lower control arms are done. Uh, we'll put the skid plate back on. Customers are missing a bolt right here in the drain. Looks like some old change place didn't put it back. But uh, yeah, so now we're gonna go to the back and tighten all the control arms back there. And uh, all right, well, let's go to the back. Okay, so this one's pretty much done. Um, now that we've showed you guys how to install all this fun stuff, uh, go forth and prosper. Otherwise, shoot us an email. Cody at CodyCrafted.com for business inquiries. Appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.